Well, 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 look who's back. It's me, Satescape. With a new Let's Play, that is. Sparrow into the Dragonfly. Now, this is going to be 100%. This is going to be a 100% Let's Play. Um, I'm actually overwriting a, a very old save file there. And yeah, we've got all these weird icons you can choose from. And, Going with the cow because cows are funny and they smell. Um, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Oh, most likely you're not. Well, I'll um, I'll explain in a moment. I've um, got a cutscene coming up after the two loading screens the game is gi the game gives us. Uh, I may stutter a little bit at the beginning <laughs> because I I haven't done any commentary for over a year. But yeah. Uh, we got the sorceress here, and a very bad hunter model. Uh, this is apparently set straight after um, Spyro 3. It's a celebration of sort of Spyro's triumphs, as well as the whole um, sort of like dragonfly ceremony. And we get a very abrupt return. Um, of Ripto, which is weird. Whom we thought we would, uh, we thought was dead, which is weird. And Tom Kenny reprises his role as Sparrow for the for the last time. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, he, he was decent. I, I liked Castle as a Rocky better, but that's because I have a bit of a Sparrow one bias. And we have Ripto trying the cliche join me. But I, li I like this bit. And the interesting thing there is he mentions Nasty Nork, but. Um, he doesn't actually appear in the game. He was originally supposed to team up with Ripto, but um, too many time constraints, so much was cut out of the game. Ripto's massive bottom jaw. <laughs> but yeah, Ripto's plan is um, get rid of all the dragonflies, because... The dragons are powerless without them. I don't know if it's something to do with, like, they help with uh, dragon magic, or if it's just like every dragon has what Spyro has got and has a has a pet dragonfly that takes uh, three hits for him. But you never see any other dragons with a dragonfly. And then Bianca's spidey sense comes in handy. She, uh, for some reason, knows a good location to start, which is actually just inside the main castle, and coincidentally, Sparks is there. And once again, we've got two load screens. Um, in this game, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to show all the the load screens. I have cut most of them out. Uh, I stopped showing load screens up until the first, um, I think until the first level loads, just to show how long they are. Because uh, one of the biggest criticisms of this game was the load load times. Uh, I believe the the GameCube version has shorter loading times, but I'm playing the PS2 version. Whoa! What'd you do that for? Drat! That didn't exactly work right. I'm still learning, you know, Spyro. The good news is I. And this is where um this is how Spyro gets his special different breath abilities in the game, but doesn't uh doesn't go to plan and he can't use them immediately and that's this and one little bit more is all is all Bianca does in the game now um, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly is the fourth main game on like a home console um, it's the second Spyro game I actually played and I'd say I've got quite a bit more um, tolerance towards it 
than quite a few other people, probably probably because of, I wouldn't say nostalgic bias, but just, I don't know, I guess I'm just a bit more lenient. Um, yeah, I didn't actually, I didn't actually play this until about, I think, three years after it came out. I didn't even know it existed until about two years after it came out. Um, it's usually my kind of thing, the kind of thing that happens with a lot of games. Uh, it's not quite as bad now because of the internet, but I don't usually find out about things until quite a while after everyone else has. Um, oh yes, and um, yeah, first thing I do is I turn off vibration because I don't, I don't, you know, really not a big fan of vibration in, in uh, video games that much. And also, I turned off hints. A good thing to do is to turn off hints the moment you uh, start the game, because it stops sparks from running in, like stopping you from doing everything to tell you what it is. He tells you what gems are, what baskets are, what fodder is, and it's just a massive pace breaker. Um, but yeah, there's our first uh, rune. We just uh, take it to that statue and get the bubble breath, which is used for capturing dragonflies for some reason. But yeah, this was my second Spyro game. The I think the next one after that, it's a bit of a blur. I don't know if I played A Hero's Tales next, or if I actually went on to the Legend of Spyro trilogy and then came back and played A Hero's Tale. Um, just I, I just don't remember which way around that was, because I didn't play like any of them when they came out. Um, I actually played the the Legend of um, Spyro trilogy. Uh, I played it Dawn of the Dragon, New Beginning, and then the Eternal Night. That's the order I played it in. But yeah, you have to use your bubble breath on um, on the dragonflies, and the hit detection is really weird and wonky. Uh, so you just gotta keep trying it, and then then eventually, um, dragonfly will be captured. Uh, I didn't actually play Spyro 2 and 3, you know, until, um, 2010. Uh, it took, it was quite a while before I actually got a chance to play them, so I don't, so I don't actually have any, like, nostalgia for them like other people do. But I still enjoy them. Uh, this game is very similar to those games, I think. Maybe more so Spyro 2 just because it doesn't have the. Um, uh, I can't say that really. Spyro, Spyro 2's got. Um, it doesn't have multiple characters you can play as. Um, as, uh, as does this game, but. Um, I'd say the, se the segmented areas for challenges is a very Spyro 3 thing. Because after that, the, um, the games deviate from the formula quite a bit. But uh, yeah, we're just in the um, home world, the only home world of um, of this game. A lot of content was cut, so there was, there was actually, I think there's 10 levels and there was originally supposed to be 25, but now we're talking to Hunter, who doesn't do much, just tells you how to jump and glide, a bit like in Spyro 2 actually. Uh, this is the, this is almost the only thing he does in the game, you only get to see him like one at a time. And um, we get our first instance of not so great level design. Is is that you, you want to go through? You want to go to there and um, like glide over, but um, sometimes you might end up actually accidentally going through that challenge portal. And although it's not really a, an issue, it can be a bit of a nuisance, especially if you still want to go talk to Hunter and get the um, the next dragonfly. And yeah, you just, that's a challenge you can do to get a uh, dragonfly. Um, they all got names, and actually Tom Kenny voices like, hey, it's, and then he actually says every name. Um, an interesting thing with this game is every single dragonfly that you get from a challenge is blue. And I think that, I don't know why, it might have just been just laziness and time constraints. But yeah, the challenge gate, there's, um, 
There's ones and they got the different breath types on them. Uh, this one is you go through the um, the gate and the scarecrows appear and you have to flame them all before the time runs out. And this it's not that hard, but you have to um, you just don't don't really deviate from anything, otherwise um, you will run out of time. Um, yeah, this game of course has the fodder back. Uh, I do like a little detail they have, whereas if you do flame certain ones, they do actually like show cooked meat, which is a bit funny. Um, Sparks talks in this game with his uh, kazoo voice. Uh, you can actually tell what he's saying if you listen close enough, but it's difficult. Um, I don't remember if Sparks talked in the um, earlier games. And if he did, did he have a kazoo voice? Or was it just a load of like buzzing? Uh, this portal I'm right now, that's actually the portal to the final boss. And um, yeah, you, you can't get there yet unless if you, you glitch, which isn't that hard because um, this game is a bit notorious for its glitches. Uh, you just need to use a swimming in the air glitch, which I do actually have a very old video of. Uh, by very old, I mean back when I actually used a, you know, like a. a camcorder and pointed it at a TV. Yeah, you can use that as well to find out where Hunter went, because after you do that challenge he just jumps up and disappears. Uh, he, they actually just put his model behind the um, behind the castle. So if you if you just um, use a swim in the air glitch you can go behind the castle, you can just see him stood there sort of talking to himself. But yeah, this game sort of got this thing where um, Sort of like, I don't really know how you, what you call it, like progression milestones maybe? Where um, you put, um, they put the, those, those, uh, I'm stuttering, I'm like mad. They put, um, they put uh, gates there and you need to have certain breaths to, uh, to get them and you only get the certain breaths from the levels. But um, yeah, we got this uh, first thing. Uh, this guy takes us to the next level. He doesn't really, he's got this stone. Um, you only need one dragonfly to get to the first level. But yeah, um, an interesting thing with, with the uh, with the levels is that you don't actually have portals in this game. That You go all by like a transportation device. But that's for our next part, so see you then guys.